and told her the sun would rot. And in due time, the wounds will heal. And she learned to love him. But after the rain, her pain kept sliding down the rainbow of hope. Her grief never became dumb. Change won't come because she never loved him from the start. And deep down inside of her heart, doubt was heavy than courage. And the man is to fall on the altar, crush her soul, and now the coroner of love can no longer identify her happiness. Time has become the antagonist because it has taken too long to take her out of this misery, too long to announce her eulogy by having the wind use leaves and strings to harmonize either the coming of Christ or the angel of death, and all she's sticking to her stuff, man, in due time, I won't have anything left. And he kept thinking to himself, if any clock were to disappear, time would still tick, tick, tick. So as a man, he never imagined he needed a second hand to keep his home moving in a circle of motion. I mean, he had dreams of being a perfect husband. So the breeze from his smile can make the night blush and fill her insides with butterflies. So they can be the first couple in history to use a bed as a notebook to write a story. And between sheets with drips of intimacy. And only use sex as a footnote to explain the broken bedpost. But see, but instead, the, the silence has quieted as alone. And now he is stuck in a horror dream, laying inside of a nest, that especially made for sorrow to defecate and rest. I mean, where did he go wrong? How could he have known that his wife would turn out to be so difficult and not be the freaky type? It was only playing her cards right until she got that ring in a honeymoon vacation. <laughs> And all he kept hearing was, man, I just how it is after you get married. Yo, we all go through it. But in due time, it'll get better, and you'll learn to live with it. So every night they meet in a solitary confinement that used to be a home, furnished by chaos. Where happiness is being held for ransom. They yearn for social interaction. The more they think, the louder the silence. Their minds feel like larynxes with overused vocal cords. His clock sounds like he might have taken Talk seconds that synchronize with the amount of time his heart beat in a minute. And she measures the hours by the movement and shadow of sunrise to freedom, while infidelity stays hidden. And between the shadow of silence and isolation. And they both wonder how can God allow time to travel without them? After they faithfully followed the laws, biblical teachings, traditional upbringings, and now they're stumbling. Not knowing that they've been wearing two left shoes because they got dressed for a wedding in a dark room created by surrounding influences. <laughs> Ten years, four kids, church leader, Bible study teacher, unhappy lovers, miserable together. But God firm enough to respect the fact that God hates divorce, so they continue to sleep on a lonely bed that keeps them company at night. They toss and turn only to find consolation in the arms of the passing atmosphere. Instead of being intimate, they become inmates to love and time and dreams and choices, <coughs> marry and miserable. Take top, one shot at true love. No room for second guessing. Time is ticking. No more second chances. Three strikes. Time's up. Go.